Hello everyone! Welcome to another episode of Empowerment Technologies Lesson. And for today, we will talk about productivity tools. And to begin with, for sure nakikita nyo sa aking screen, you will you will wonder bakit kaya ito yung nakikita nyo or bakit ito yung aking background sa ating screen. It's because ito yung ating pag-uusapan sa lesson na ito. Okay, so let's start with our content standards. So the learners demonstrate an understanding of the use of advanced tools and techniques found in common productivity and software applications in developing ICT content for specific professional tracks. So for sure, lahat naman kayo dito ay na-experience na na gumamit ng Microsoft Word or ng other word processing applications and other productivity tools. But for this lesson, particular lang tayo sa word processing application. So what is our performance standard? You are expected to be able to independently apply advanced productivity tools to create or develop ICT content for use in specific professional tracks, arts, technical, vocational, sports, and academic. And this lesson will be a helpful lesson for each and every one, for, uh, for sure dahil may mga times na uh, other subjects will require you to submit or to create an essay or presentation using different productivity tools. And this lesson is really essential for you. So what is our most essential learning competencies? Number one, uses common productivity tools effectively by maximizing advanced application techniques. So we will not talk about the basics of these productivity tools. We will focus on the most essential learning competency and ano-ano yung mga pwede nyong magamit kapag kayo ay nasa field or nasa work na. Number two is creates an original or derivative ICT content to effectively communicate or present data or information related to specific professional tracks. Okay, so this lesson is actually uh, parts 1 to 4. So, dinivide ko to parts 1 to 4 para siguradong mabigyan natin ng focus ang bawat productivity tools o pinaka kinakailangan na productivity tools na mahal ng bawat isa sa inyo. Okay? So, last time, we have discussed uh, from our previous lesson the, only, the online safety, uh, security, ethics, and etiquette standards, and practice in the use of information and communication technologies. Name the various online threats, identify the online safety measures and consider one's and others reputation when using the when using the internet we also discussed using the internet to provide credible research and information gathering to achieve specific class objectives best or address situational so this lesson will discuss and understand the different uses of productivity tools and appreciate this productivity tools. So our lesson is Applied Productivity Tools with Advanced Application Techniques. And to begin with, let's define productivity tools. When you say product productivity tools, it refers to the software. It is a program that people use to create and produce documents, presentations, databases, charts, and graphs. Productivity tools help you to create professional quality documents, presentations, graphics, and more. So it is really important that you senior high school student will be able to use productivity tools because most of the activities uh, from this subject up to, up to the other seven subjects and your grade 12 subjects will require you to use productivity tools and other programs. So why should you learn productivity tools? 
While there is a wide range of benefits of using productivity tools, the best reason is that we must use computers to do different tasks more efficiently every day. Imagine, meron kayong task na kumugda gumawa ng isang letter and if you are going to use the traditional form of writing a letter, it will take you time and efforts. Now, with the use of productivity tools, mas nagiging madali ang pag-develop ng mga ganun klaseng mga, uh, mga application or mga, mga letters and documents or presentations and other graphs. So, ano po yung nakikita nyo sa ating screen? Ito pong mga nakikita nyo sa ating screen are some of the productivity tools that are really essential, especially kapag kayo ay nasa pagtatrabaho na. And since kayo ay senior high school students, most likely you are like a college, prof uh, college students and time to time talagang gagamit kayo ng mga ganitong productivity tools. And familiar ba kayo dun sa productivity tool logo number one? Of course, familiar kayong lahat dyan. At dahil ayan na mismo yung nakikita nyo ngayon sa ating screen. This is the logo for a word processing application known as Microsoft Word. So let's define first what is a word processor. So word processor is, is an application that allows users to create, edit, and print documents. One of the most widely used word processors is Microsoft Word. It is developed by Microsoft and released on October 25, 1983. With Microsoft Word, you can create random things like calendars, newsletters, invitations, and so on and so forth. Microsoft Word offers several elements that can be used in editing documents. And aside from MS Word, there are really a, there are several uh, applications that can be used as a word processor. We have now Google Docs. We have LibreOffice applications. So you can use those applications in order for you to create, edit, and print documents. Now, I will show you the parts of the Microsoft Office interface. So what you see in this screen is the 2007 MS Office Word. So let's define each parts. So first, as you can see, meron ang tinatawag na ribbon. Okay? So uh, the ribbon is nandodoon sa may taas. That is number two. And the ribbon is the strip of the buttons and icons located above the work area in Word 2007. So the ribbon replaces the menus and toolbars found in earlier versions of Word. So each ribbon contains groups of commands, button, with common purpose. Each ribbon contains seven tabs. The next is the office button. You can see it in the num in number one. Okay, so office button. So when you click the office button, you will find a drop-down menu containing options such as open, save, and print. Also shows uh, previously opened files which you may choose to pin them to make them permanent choices. Next, we have rulers. As you can see, the rulers Ayan, itong nandito sa pinakagilid, under number 4. The ruler gives you an idea of where you are on the page. Next, we have the tab selector button. So, the tab selector button is on number 3. This one. So the tab selector button, you can easily set tab stops by clicking on the desired position on the ruler. This button allows you to determine which type of tab will be set left aligned, right aligned, center aligned, or decimal tab. 
clicking on this button will allow you to change the tab style. Of course, we have the document or the working area. So your document is on number 5. So the document is what you are typing or what will print out. So kung makikita nyo sa ating screen, ayan yung parang kagaya ng il yung illustration ng band paper sa application na ito. Now we have the status bar. Okay, so the status bar is itong nasa baba. Kung makikita niyo under number 6. So number 6 po siya. So this row can be customized by right-clicking and select desired options. The desired options may include page number, the number of total pages, or word count, <clears throat> insert or over type mode, caps lock, and the zoom slide. Next, we have the view shortcut. So, the view shortcut is located dun sa pinakailalim. Ayan. Under, under number 8. The view shortcuts, these four buttons allow you to change the way you view your document on the screen. From the left to right, they are print layout, full, re uh, full screen reading, web layout, and the drop. This can be added or removed by right-clicking anywhere on the status bar and checking un or unchecking the view shortcuts. So I will just show you paano po siya na kumagana, ano po yung nangyayari kapag kiniklik po natin yan. So here in my Microsoft Office Word applications, under itong buttons na ito, naka-print layout po tayo by default. So once you click this button, you will see merong naka-pop-up message na nakalagay is read mode. So when you click that, you will see the interface will change from the print layout to a read, read mode. Ayan. So kung, babas, kung pagbabasa lang ang purpose, so, ito, ito ay mas magandang gamitin. Now, we also have this web layout. So, once you, you, you click the web layout, it will look like a web page or a website or a web page to be exact. So, balik tayo sa ating print layout. So, the next one is the task bar. Of course, yung task bar, yun yung nakikita natin lagi sa ating monitor, yung sa may pinakailalim, which shows open programs. Kung ano yung mga naka-open na programs sa ating monitor. Yan, kung ano yung nakikita ninyo, may mga folders, Internet Explorer is open, and so on and so forth. We also have the zoom slide. So, the zoom slide is located dun sa pinakailalim under number 9. So the zoom slide allows you to increase or decrease the amount of the document you see on the screen. So it's like a magnifying glass. When you add or zoom in, uh, it will magnify the document. Kapag naman po nag-minus tayo, mas tinitignan naman natin siya in a far uh, view. Mas malayong view. The next one is the view ruler button. So the view ruler button is under number 10. It allows you to view or hide the rulers. We also have the screen split button, which is under number 11. The screen split button at the top of the vertical scroll bar is a new button. Just below the double arrow is a tiny button that looks like a minus sign that lets you split your screen in two when double click. So double clicking it a second time will unsplit your screen. Of course, we have the scroll bars. Ayan yung madalas nating nakikita sa pinakabandang kanan natin. So the scroll bar allows you to view the entire workbook by moving it up, down, or vertical scroll bar left or right or horizontal scroll bar. So if the document or yung inyong working area has two or more pages, you can just scroll it down para makita mo yung other parts ng iyong document. Of course, we have the right indent. 
So, the right indent is under number 12. Kung nakikita niyo sa ating screen, that is number 12. The right indent slide that, uh, this triangle to the left of the margin to limit the right side of a paragraph to, the, to that point. So, move the triangle to the right of the margin to allow the right side of the paragraph to extend beyond the margin. So, the triangle at the margin will keep the right side of the paragraph with the margin. So, yan, kapag nag-move tayo dyan, o kinlik natin, and then hold natin yung blue parts na yan, and then, minove natin siya going to right, mag-move din lahat ng mga text natin na nando doon sa document. So, kung, kung, kung nasaan yung blue na ito, ng right indent na ito, hanggang doon lang, mag, makik, hanggang doon lang natin makikita yung mga text na nasa document natin. Okay, we also have the group. So, what is group naman? So, yung group naman ay makikita natin under the uh, number 14. Ayan, as you can see, meron dyan mga parang mga different typefaces or font. Okay, so these command buttons with a common purpose are clustered together. So, each ribbon contains several groups. Pag kinlik nyo po yung different, uh, par, uh, different menus na nandiyan sa, sa ating um, sa taas, makikita nyo po yung bawat ribbon niya, iba-iba din yung mga groups na nando doon. Okay, so some groups but not all contain a quick launch bar or the dialog box launcher in the bottom right hand corner. We also have the quick launch bar or the dialog box launcher. So makikita naman yan sa bandang taas under number 15. So, it is the arrow in the bottom right-hand corner of some groups. When click it, it will bring up a dialog box where additional options, changes can be entered. Now, we, we have the title bar. So, yung title bar naman, sa pinakataas, makikita natin under number 16. So, the title bar shows the name of the program and open documents. So, by default, once you open a Microsoft op uh, Office document, na hindi pa naninim, nakapangalan po siya saan? Document 1. All, it also contains the minimize, maximize, and close button. Kung makikita natin yung tatlong button doon, which is also called the control buttons. We also have the quick access toolbar under number 17. So the quick access toolbar, this customized toolbar allows you to add frequently used command. Click on the down arrow at the end of the toolbar to add or remove com a command uh, buttons or right-click on any command button and choose Add to Quick Access Toolbar. So, madalas makikita natin dyan kung ano yung pinaka nagagamit nating mga tools. And we have the tab. The tab is under number 18. So, the ribbon is broken down into seven tabs. So, each tab has a common purpose and consists of several groups. To select the tabs, simply click on it and the appropriate groups will be displayed. Now, we have the first line indent. The first line indent is uh, this triangle controls where the first line of the paragraph begins. So, move to the left of the margin will allow the first paragraph to be in the left margin. Can be moved to the right of the margin to indent your paragraph. So, hanging indent naman is the opposite of a first line indent. It is often moved to the right of the first line indent, which allows the remaining lines of a paragraph to be indented according to placement of the triangle. So, these are the parts of MS or the Microsoft Word 2007. Now, let's proceed to, to integrating images and external materials. Of course, kapag po tayo ay gumagamit ng Microsoft Word, pwedeng-pwede po tayo mag-insert ng different objects. And para mas makita nyo yung nasa screen ko, I will magnify it or use the zoom slide. So, for sure, mas kita nyo na ito sa ating monitor. Okay. So, we can...
insert different kinds of materials. The Microsoft Word is capable of integrating to make your documents richer, more impressive, and more informative. The first one that we can insert is a pictures. So pictures are electronic or soft copy or digital pictures you have saved in any local storage device. The three common types of picture files that we can encounter in MS Word are the .jpg, the .gif, and the .png. So that .jpg, pronounced as JPEG, stands for Joint Photographic Experts Group. This type of image file can support 16.7 million colors suitable for use when working with full-color photographic images. Now, GIF naman, that, that GIF stands for Graphic Interchange Format. So this type of image file is capable of displaying transparency and animation. It only supports 256 colors. So if you will compare the GIF to JPEG or, or PNG, you will see that GIF is lesser in when it comes to uh, its color content. Mas, mas clear or mas defined ang color sa JPEG and PNG compare sa GIF. Now, we have this .png. So, .png stands for Portable Network Graphics. It is capable of displaying transparency but not animation. Kung si GIF, capable siya of, of displaying both transparency and animation. The PNG naman, only displaying transparency, not animation. However, it supports 16 million colors. Now, paano po tayo mag insert ng image? Papakita ko po yung sample kung paano. So, once you... Uh, under dito sa mga tabs natin, sa menu tabs, we have this insert button. Click the insert button. And then you will see under the second uh, group, or the third group rather, which is the illustrations group, you will see the pictures. So you can insert pictures from your computer, stack image library, or online sources. So what you will do is to insert picture coming from your computer. So just click this picture icon and then and then you will see this device. Click this device and locate your pictures kung nasaan man siya sa inyong computer. So let's say we have this picture, the parts of MS Word, which I presented to you a while ago. And that's it. Makikita na siya agad sa ating screen. Kung ayaw nyo naman ng ganong type, you can actually open a folder and just Click, hold, and drag, eh, drag, and drag nyo po ito dito sa mismo at Microsoft Word. Magpwedeng pwede po yun. Now, aside from the pictures, we also have clip arts. So, this is generally a GIF type of image. So, light art drawings or images are used as a generic representation for ideas and objects that you might want to integrate into your documents. May mga predefined mga clip arts na pwede nyo na rin insert directly from your document or from the Microsoft Office application. We can also insert shapes. So these are printable objects or materials that you can integrate into your document to enhance its appearance or to allow you to, to have some tools to use for composing and representing ideas or messages. So paano po mag insert ng shapes? So, balik tayo. Doon ulit po tayo sa Insert tab. You can see under the Illustrations group, ito pong shapes. And when you click that, there are a lot of illustrations that you can use. We have the lines, rectangles, basic shapes, black arrows, equation shapes, flowcharts, starts, stars and banners, callouts, or you can actually draw according to your desired uh, shapes using the new drawing canvas. So let's try. So shapes, uh, mag insert ako for example ng rectangle. Just click it and then click hold sa inyong document and according to your desire. And that's it.
If you want to change its properties, you can see that under the Format tab, you can change the color under the Shape field. You can change the Shape Outline. You can also change the Shape Effects if you want to, write, to add some presets, shadows, reflections, glows, and so on and so forth. Another thing that we can insert is the so-called Smart Art. So it is a different a tool from shapes because smart art generally are predefined sets of different shapes grouped to form ideas that are organizational or structural. So, so if you are going to create uh, or illustrate your ideas using uh, different graphic tools, you can use smart art. For example, let's try. For example, you are asked to create a hierarchical or hierarchy of positions under the department na meron sa inyo sa inyong company. So you can use insert and then click the smart art and then you can use the hierarchy graphics, smart art graphics and then you can see different predefined hierarchy graphics na pwede nyong gamitin. So let's say for example I will just click this organizational charts which is normally used to show non-sequential or group blocks of information it maximizes both horizontal and display space for shapes. So let's try. Ayan. So as you can see, meron dyan mga text, di ba? Nakalagay lang is text. So dyan po kayo mag -e edit Dito sa may area na to, wherein you can add text. Ayan. And depending sa kung ano yung nando doon sa first tab, siya yung magiging head. And let's say, for example, this is the president. And, pwede na kayo mag-add ng other pang, other, other group, a person. So, let's try. Person C. And, person Ayan. Let's say, for example, si person A ay meron ding, ah, si person D ay meron din siya mga sub-persons, personal pa under ng kanyang uh, provision or ng kanyang leadership. So, just click enter and click tab para pumasok siya under the person D. So, when you click tab, you will see that the next shape is connected to person D. So, ganun po siya nag nag-work. Hindi na kayo magdadraw ng isa-isang shapes para lang makapag-create ng ganitong klaseng presentation. Okay? I will create other videos to uh, para mas maano pa natin ma-explain ma at makapag-explore pa tayo sa different types of graphics na pwede natin gamitin sa smart art tools. Okay? So aside from smart art, we also have the charts. So this uh, material is another type of, ma of material you can integrate into your Word document to represent data characteristics and trends. So the input chart, just click on the Insert tab, and then you will see the chart icon. So you can add a chart, just click it anyway, and there are a lots of predefined charts that pwede mo nang gamitin. Okay, so data na lang po ang iba ang ang aayusin, ang ilalagay mo and then siya nang bahala ng mag-present nito in a chart or graphical form. Okay? So let's say for example, this one is column. Click natin si column. And yan, okay, you will see merong merong chart in Microsoft Word na, na, na tab na nakalagay dito wherein you can you will just edit this, the data under this, de depending dun sa inyong needs. So that is chart. Next, we can also integrate screenshots. Creating reports or manuals for training or procedure will require integrating a more realistic image of what, are you, what you are discussing in your report or manual. Or, and the screenshots is effective when it comes to that. So you can you can insert that 
Uh, punta ulit sa insert bot insert tab and then under that may, you can see the take a screenshot button so just click it and then you will see kung anong window ang gusto mong screenshot and then once you click that that's it agad agad na siya makikita sa inyong screen or if you want you can actually con you can actually use the the print screen button sa inyong a keyboards, you will see the PRTSC symbol. Just click print screen. Doon po sa inyo pong a desired, desired view na nandiyan sa inyong monitor. And then once na na-click na po siya, just paste it on your uh, Microsoft Word editor. So that is the first part of lesson 3. So I will show you uh, on the next video, I will present to you how to do the mail merge. So for now, let you, uh, you for now enjoy the rest of the day and review the, but the your Microsoft Word application. You can try it with the use of your smartphones and compare the the interface of Microsoft Office in when it is installed in computer or in smartphones. So again, this is your teacher, Brian Asibuche. I will see you on the next video.